Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the graduation ceremony for the graduates of the Faculty of Commerce and Management. In a few minutes, the graduation ceremony will commence. The procession of dais and star parties will enter. I will signal to you when you are to rise and remain standing until all of the members of the stage party are seated. May I take this opportunity to request that you turn off all mobile phones and pages, and may I also remind you that flash photography is prohibited within this auditorium. Ladies and gentlemen, the Acting Chancellor, Mr Henry Smerden, will now address us. Mr Vince O'Rourke, Professor Glyn Davis, Vice-Chancellor, members of the Griffith University Council, distinguished guests, colleagues, graduates, Ladies and gentlemen, it is the custom for Griffith University and its guests to gather and celebrate the conferral of academic awards on its graduates. On behalf of the Council of the University, I'm pleased to extend a very warm welcome to everyone present for this graduation ceremony. This occasion is particularly special for our students who this evening are graduating from the Faculty of Commerce and Management. In the presence of family, friends, and representatives from the entire university community. Their dedication and hard work are recognised and rewarded. I am also privileged to extend a very warm welcome this evening to Mr Vince O'Rourke, the former Chief Executive of Queensland Rail. Vince will receive the honorary degree Doctor of the University and I'm also delighted that Vince has accepted an invitation to deliver this evening's occasional address. In recent times, higher education has been the subject of, at times, heated discussion and debate. While the discussion and debate generally acknowledges the importance of higher education to Australia's prosperity, the character of the modern sector 
and in particular the range of university activities and capabilities, as well as the diversity of their purposes and their needs, is not always appreciated by our policymakers. Too often, we seem to be faced with a one-size-fits-all syndrome, rather than taking appropriate account of newer, faster-growing institutions such as Griffith. The recent changes to arrangements governing research higher degrees has been a case in point. Let there be no doubt that universities are a vital part of our nation's economic and social infrastructure. If Australia is to secure a strong, viable place for itself in the new global economy, the reality is that it must have in place policy frameworks and funding arrangements which are supportive of higher education aspirations and outcomes and which recognise the diversity in the sector. However, it is fair to say that much has been achieved in the past 20 years. The Australian higher education sector has transformed from a somewhat elite to a much more egalitarian system. The numbers of universities and students have nearly doubled and the sector has developed as a strongly performing export industry. Furthermore, close linkages have been developed between universities, industry and the community, which have played an important part in facilitating the rapid expansion of the sector. While we have much to be proud of, unfortunately, Australia still has some way to go to match other OECD countries, which consider public outlays on higher education sectors that are broadly based and accessible to be a critical investment in their human capital. If we are to grow and prosper as a nation of the future, in my view, we must dismiss any notion that higher education outlays are a burdensome budget expense. The investment in higher education must be made, not only for our future, but the future of generations to come. I am not alone in holding this view. Such eminent persons as Rupert Murdoch and Ian McFarlane, Governor of the Reserve Bank, have commented on the national importance of a well-funded and functioning university sector. Mr Murdoch has gone so far as to warn that, without urgent support for our centres of learning, Australia is threatened with global irrelevance. I hope that the announced review of higher education by the Federal Education Minister Dr Nelson recognises and appreciates not just how much has been achieved over the past 20 years, but also what can be achieved by universities such as Griffith in the future, provided we receive adequate support. But let me hasten to add that the investment must come not just from government, but from the business and the community as well. Each must play their part. For our part, we believe that Griffith University has an important role to play in shaping the future and is committed to the enrichment of the Queensland, Australian and international communities through teaching and research. In keeping with this belief, Griffith is a strong supporter of the Queensland Government's Smart State Initiatives and the Gold Coast City Council's Innovation City Strategy. In less than 30 years, our university has grown from being one of the smallest public universities into a multi-campus, learner-centred research institution spanning the Brisbane Gold Coast region. Our university is currently the ninth largest Australian university with approximately 26,000 students and growing. Griffith is poised to establish itself among the top 10 research institutions in Australia. It hosts some 50 research units and ranks eighth nationally for research income from industry. Moreover, Griffith is one of the most active universities in the Cooperative Research Centre program, being a participant in 11 of these centres. As a teaching institution, Griffith aspires to prepare graduates committed to civic responsibility, who are professionally able and who combine technical knowledge with broad skills in analysis, problem solving, communication and teamwork. Our university was founded on innovative teaching methods and has maintained a strong commitment to innovation and creativity. Visit one of the 11 flexible learning centres in operation across the university and you can see how Griffith's innovative web-based course material enriches our traditional face-to-face -face teaching. 
Griffith University is firmly committed to equity and social justice. Two of its campuses, Logan and the Gold Coast, are located in areas that historically have had very poor levels of access to universities. Indeed, the Gold Coast continues to be disadvantaged by an allocation of publicly funded student places that is unacceptably below the national average. Griffith thus has taken and will continue to take a leading role in lobbying the federal government to redress this acknowledged imbalance. It is a case the Vice-Chancellor no doubt reinforced with Dr Nelson during his visit to the Gold Coast campus last week. Griffith has an international approach to education and one of the most extensive networks of international linkages in Australia. Our international student population at around 4,000 is one of the largest in Queensland and one of the 10 largest in Australia. Not surprisingly, Griffith has won consecutive Premier of Queensland awards for export excellence in the category of education. Commerce and Management is the largest faculty at Griffith University and it continues to enjoy strong student demand. Nearly a third of all students and over 40% of all international students are enrolled in its programs. During the past year, the faculty has concentrated on developing new markets, especially in Europe, the United States and India. It has also strengthened its links with counterpart institutions overseas. The School of Tourism and Hotel Management now offers a joint degree in hotel management with Sejong University in Korea, while the schools of international business and Asian studies and of accounting, banking and finance are developing joint programs with Shenyang University in China. It is not surprising, therefore, that international student enrolments in the Faculty of Commerce and Management have jumped by 41%. A study published recently in the Pacific Basin Finance Journal ranked Griffith 28th out of almost 100 universities for the number of publications appearing in 17 respected finance journals during the 1990s. A strong testament to the commitment our university has to research and publication. But perhaps our best and longest lasting contributions to our society are all these outstanding individuals sitting here with us this evening. To our graduating students, may I say that now your studies are completed, you are joining an elite group. The percentage of the Australian population who possess tertiary qualifications is not large. As members of this group, you can have reasonable expectations for better career opportunities and rewards. However, the road will not always be easy and there are no guarantees of outcomes. For many of you, tonight is another step in what will be a lifetime of continuous learning and development. The benefits of a good education are well documented. It enables us to realise our potential as individuals, as members of our families and community, and in our chosen careers. At the same time, education also brings a particular responsibility to work for a better world, to be sensitive and responsive to issues of social justice, and to be competent, ethical, and hardworking professionals in whatever field of endeavour we choose for ourselves. I commend you on the achievements which already signify your personal determination, energy, and the ability to make differences in your lives. However, it takes more than determination to succeed. The building blocks provided by this university and the partnerships we have forged with you to this point are important. But the support of your family and friends should never be underestimated. It is true that change is inevitable. Time, your career and the people in your lives will all make some contribution to this change process. Change is an opportunity for growth and learning and to discover diverse aspects of the human condition. I hope that, added to the wonderful knowledge you already possess, these experiences will nurture tolerance and understanding. My final hope for all graduates is that your years of preparation to reach this point will be the impetus for much more work and study that will reward you with many years of happiness and fulfilment. 
I hope that in this process of continuous learning, you will always give back to the community and to the world in keeping with the education and opportunities afforded you. As we continue with this evening's proceedings, I would again express my very warm congratulations to each one of you and extend to you our best wishes for your lives ahead. Thank you. I now call upon Professor Alan Hodson, Dean of the Faculty of Commerce and Management, to present the graduates from the faculty who are to receive their awards at this ceremony. Acting Chancellor, I present graduates from the Faculty of Commerce and Management who have been granted the following awards. Bachelor of Business Communication, Melanie Jane Callahan. Lisa Chapelo. Rhonda Duncan. Charlene Eid. Alison Hogan. Daniel John. Anthony Keenan. Paula Key. Alex, Alex McDonald. Elisa O'Sullivan. Carly Smith. Lisa Smith. Matt Woodford. Bachelor of Business Management, Keisha Brown. John Chen. <laughs> Yu Cheng Chen. <laughs> Chia Wen Chu. <laughs> Timothy Corbett. Laura Eels. <laughs> Katina Gusetis. <laughs> Gemma Grantham. Sean Green. <laughs> Daniel Hammond. <laughs> Anna Hoffman.
Renee Jones. Shane Lewis. Matthew Macanda. Renee Newman. Kelly Newton. <laughs> Rowan Knott. <laughs> Ricky Ol. James Papworth. <laughs> Natasha Pavlova. <laughs> Lee Ang Paul. Nairi Prio. Marcus Terry. Odette Tufik. Acting Chancellor, the following graduate has been awarded the Business Management Medal for 2001 for the most outstanding academic achievement in a bachelor's degree, Darren Trinder. Justin Williams. Kate Williams. Stacy Woods. Chu Chan Kelly Wu. <laughs> Bachelor of Business Management with Second Class Honours, Division A, Jeffrey Greenfield. Bachelor of Business Management with Second Class Honours, Division B, Justin Cunningham. <laughs> Bachelor of Commerce, Sean Abel. <laughs> Varna Archal. Acting Chancellor, the following graduate has been awarded the Commerce Medal for 2001 for the most outstanding academic achievement in a bachelor's degree, Sue Agnew.
Maynez Ahmed. Stephen Allen. Kira Anderson. Carly Archer. Janet Armstrong. <laughs> Melissa Austin. <laughs> Brendan Bella Sekaran. Nicole Barber. <laughs> Stephen Bish. <laughs> ben Blake. Nicolette Bori. <laughs> Megan Bridgewater. <laughs> Amanda Brooks. Emma Birchall. <laughs> Lloyd Campbell. <laughs> Summer Campbell. <laughs> Patricia Cassis. Sin Mei Chung. <laughs> David Chim. <laughs> Angus Chung. Joel Cooney. <laughs> Nolene Costello. <laughs> Rebecca Cohen. Andrew Crichton. Brad Crow. Wendy Cudd. Susan Dayud. Claire Davy. Okay. 
Michael Debrenny. Dino Declick. David Denman. David Derwin. Judith Ivy Yaya Perusa. Ben Donnelly. Michael Downing. Athena Dozzi. Shane Dyer. Jane Ellis. Belinda Elmer. Jody Fenton. Tim Christopher Fowett. Geneva Foster. Kim Franks. Jacob Fraser. Philip Geldard. Ria George. Elizabeth Gesmo. Tanya Gibbs. Alden Godinet. Anne Gothard. Karen Graham. <laughs> Debbie Griffiths. <laughs> Elia Michael Haralampu. Craig Hayes.
Brooke Henderson. Michelle Hickey. Karen Horsfall. Feng Yu Wang. Melissa Huddy. Winton Hunter. Wendy Hutchinson. Megan Isaacs. Lyndall Jackman. Jennifer Jensen. Ejma Negra. Preben Ness Johansson. Louise Kelly. Donna Kelp. VJ Katri. Stuart Kinlock. Harry Kwan. Sue Ching Kwok. Gerard Lawler. Charlene Lefeuve. Angelos Lee Assi. Ko Luo. Stephen Lin. Yishai Lin. Gail Lindsay. Dolly Ling. Ted Lu. (laughs) 
Sharon Lockman. Julie Lucen. Michelle Mackey. Donna Ma. Yuan Wa Men. Kylie Menton. <laughs> Svetlana Matovic. <laughs> Anna McCauley. Amelia McDonald. <laughs> Colin McLeod Robertson. <laughs> Cameron Milliner. Christina Minna. <laughs> Fatma has Lisa Mohammed. <laughs> Faria Mohammed. Yunita Mohammed Ali. <laughs> Catherine Mollard. <laughs> Tracy Maloney. Gary Mortimer. <laughs> Lorraine Muller. <laughs> Trent Muller. Urfas Musa. Karisma Narayan. Yashun Ng. Flora Ung. Um. 
Mark Norris. Anna O'Neill. Sandra Auburn. Brendan Owens. Perry Pappas. Christopher Park. Jacqueline Patmore. Deborah Pierce. Eileen Phillips. Davina Paletto. Camilla Prokopsak. Michael Robinson. Carolina Rodriguez. Gavin Roshi. Paul Rowland. Lee Pin Sek. <laughs> Ling Ying Sek. <laughs> and Set One. Wan Kit Sham. Barbara Singleton. Charmaine Skirman. Scott Slack. Brendan Smith. Emma Smith. Natalie Smith. Nigel, Nigel James Smith. Peter Smith. Peter Smith. Peter Smith. Yani Soteja. Stephen 
Stefan. Amanda Steer. Angie Stein. Robin Studley. Veronica Sutanto. Elisa Swain. Matthew Talbot. Z10. Yi Boon Ten. Jonathan Tennant. Anthony Thu. Sandra Thomas. Bradley Thompson. Leanne Tran. Shall you sigh? Lucia Sue. Yvette Vincent. Sonal Weiss. Wayne. Catherine Wayne. Joel Watson. Jason Vilao. Anna White. Scott Whitehead. Liana Widja Ya Jennifer White Leanne Williams. Shellen Williams. C. 
Sylvia Williamson. Karen Wiltshire. Cheryl Wiltshire. Mandy Winton. Lee Fong Wong. <laughs> Melissa Wong. <laughs> Linda Marie Xavier. Jack Yang. Lisa Yates. Carmen Younger. Neil Younger. <laughs> Bachelor of Commerce with First Class Honours, Alexander Gash. May McPhail. <laughs> Raksha Ram. <laughs> Bachelor of Commerce in Banking, Finance and Risk Management. Lauren Aubrey. Arnie Gunnar Anderson. Acting Chancellor. The following graduate has been awarded the Banking, Finance and Risk Management Medal for 2001 for the most outstanding academic achievement in a bachelor's degree, David Camilleri. <laughs> Kai Fang Dai. Mark Everson. Abdul Aziz Khalid. Tai Hong Van Lee. Cliff Mills. Daniel Newell. John O'Brien. Curtis Palloon. <laughs> 
Fawaz Rashid. Sandra Margarita Sivinson. Kakit Wong. David Vandenberg. Frank Yip. Bachelor of Commerce in Financial Planning and Investments, Thomas R.Y. Alex Colfax. Deborah Donahue. Louise Evans. Matthew Evans. Christopher Holloway. Thu Huan. Sofan Kut. Adam Lomas. <laughs> Melissa Parrish. Luke Ranson. Karen Thompson. Rachel Vasella. Nikki Wijaya. Robert Zajak. <laughs> Bachelor of Commerce in Retail Management, Megan Buck. Sharon Edkins. Carl Hobden. Christopher Jaskowski. Paul Ryan. Holly Turner. Bachelor of Commerce, Bachelor of Science. Claire Weller Evans.
Bachelor of Communication, Fleur McSkimming. Bachelor of Enterprise Management, Marie McGreevy. <laughs> Peter Thompson. <laughs> Marcus Ubel. Bachelor of International Business, I Ching Lu. <clears throat> Graduate Certificate in Banking and Finance, Ching Sung Wang. Graduate Certificate in Customer Contact Management, Robin Morrison. <clears throat> Graduate Certificate in Human Resource Management, Helen Pawson. Suzanne Pereira. <clears throat> Graduate Diploma of Accounting and Finance, Vicky Ann Stagg. Graduate Diploma of Business Computing and Information Systems, Ravi Kumar R. Sadi. <clears throat> Hamid Khan. Graduate Diploma of Human Resource Management and Industrial Relations, Jennifer Bosworth. <clears throat> Maya Brown. <clears throat> Christine Jackson. Bill Schroeder. <clears throat> Master of Banking and Finance, Ra Nut. <clears throat> Suchada Pukma Hadamrang. Yi Yong Zhang. <clears throat> Master of Commerce in Accounting and Finance, Katrina Woodrow. Master of Human Resource Management, Pacharan Amor Ni Rikadi. Brad Barber. Thank 
Leon Capra. Gemma Bronwyn Davidson. Brett Denholm. Anne Louise Purvis. Master of Information Systems, Shahidullah Akim. Kevin Shen. John Fawns. Amit Nikola. Eng Tat Ng. Keith Reed. Gloria Shee. <laughs> Serene Vasilou Apala Patti. <laughs> Michael Watson. Chai Ying Wu. <laughs> Master of Marketing Management, Simona Anashini. Kevin Carlon. <laughs> MC Kong. <laughs> Dut Lee. Jack Lou Lynn Ma Chris McGowan Francis Tam. Lisa Woodford. Sining Wu. Master of Professional Accounting, Jamie Ahn.
Margaret Francisco. Wasana Han Kit Yan Yuruk. Lu Lin. Kimari Moll. Alpha Mujev. Washikai Duati. Today the University is proud to honour graduates who have satisfied the rigorous criteria for the award of the degree of Doctor of Philosophy. Acting Chancellor, the following graduates have been granted the degree of Doctor of Philosophy taken in the Faculty of Commerce and Management. Dr Angela Back. Dr. Back's thesis examines a longitudinal study into issues of identity and control for Chinese school students in Australia, focusing on cultural dimensions related to a particular concept of self, big me and little me, and implications for self-management. The Chinese students revealed a variety of self-management approaches embedded in effort as a way of life. This research provides a basis for understanding Chinese young people and informing counselling practice. Acting Chancellor, I present Dr Angela Christine Back. Dr. Cheryl Ramsey. <clears throat> Dr. Ramsey's thesis examined adjustment and learning processes in the first year university context for international and local student groups and for teaching staff. Particular person and environment related predictors of adjustment were identified. In addition to theoretical advancements, a number of practical recommendations were advanced. Acting Chancellor, I present Dr. Cheryl Gay Ramsey. Acting Chancellor, that concludes the presentation of graduates in the Faculty of Commerce and Management. Ladies and gentlemen, there will now be a brief musical interlude performed by students from the Queensland Conservatorium, Griffith University.
not take all of me I can't you see I'm no good without you I take my lips I'd rather lose him Oh, take my hopes I'd rather lose him Your goodbye Left me with eyes that cry oh, How can I hang a one girl without you? You took the part that once was my heart So why not take all of me? Take all of me I can't you see I'm no good without you Take my lips I'd rather lose them Oh, take my arms I'd rather lose them Your goodbye Left me with eyes that cry How can I go on, girl, without you? You took the part That once was my heart So why? Now take all, oh, why not take all, oh, why not take all?
I think we're very privileged to have within the Griffith family the Queensland Conservatorium of Music, which continues to astound me in the array of talent it can produce for our musical interludes. And I think our trio tonight are no exception. Well done, boys. With the authority of the Council, I shall now confer the degree of Doctor of the University. I call upon the Vice-Chancellor, Professor Glyn Davis, to read the citation. Acting Chancellor, the Council of the University has resolved to award the degree of Doctor of the University to Mr Vince O'Rourke, AA. Vince O'Rourke was born in Bathurst in 1936 and educated at South Riverina in New South Wales. Following in his father's footsteps, he began his career with the State Railway Authority in Albury, New South Wales, in 1954 as a junior porter. He worked in different parts of the state in various departments, including operations, finance and business, during the early part of his career. He was promoted to the position of General Manager Freight Services, the largest branch within the New South Wales Railway Authority, employing 9,000 people across the state and generating over $800 million in revenue. 36 years after he joined the New South Wales Railway Authority, Vince O'Rourke moved to Queensland in October 1990 to become the Commissioner of the then Railways Department. This was a period of great change. He soon began a process of commercialisation and is now credited with sparking the renaissance of rail in Australia. Vince O'Rourke oversaw Queensland Rail's program of reform and commercialisation, culminating in its corporatisation in July 1995. The 10-year reform program, which began in 1991, included a $6.5 billion worth of capital investment, an overhaul of operations and a new customer and safety focus. Under his leadership, Queensland Rail has become the nation's most progressive railway operator, leading a revival of rail transport with new products and technology. During his time, this time, Queensland Rail developed the Tilt Train and the luxury passenger train, the Great South Pacific Express. Other outstanding achievements included the building of the Gold Coast Railway and the establishment of the finest steam heritage railway fleet in Australia. The corporation achieved outstanding freight haulage records for export coal and received tourism awards for the Queenslander and the Spirit of the Outback services. The corporation also achieved three success the best I'm sorry, the corporation also achieved the, be the best commuter on time running performance in Australia for three successive years by the City Train Urban and Interurban Network. Under Vince O'Rourke's leadership, Queensland Rail became Australia's largest railway network with 9,400 kilometres of track and has become a profitable corporation with an operating revenue of around $2 billion and assets of more than $7 billion. Vince O'Rourke is passionate about Queensland Rail being part of the community it serves. As the Chief Executive Officer of Queensland Rail, he was responsible for developing a strong emphasis on association with tourism, an area which in turn relates to one of Griffith University's major teaching and research interests. He was instrumental in the introduction of the Griffith University Queensland Rail Scholarships, the first of which was awarded to a Malaysian student. Over a career spanning 46 years, Vince O'Rourke has not only contributed greatly to the development of a viable rail industry in Queensland, but he's also supported education initiatives in regional areas. Vince O'Rourke was one of the founders of an organisation of high-profile public and private enterprises under one banner, the Australiasian Railway Association. He was the first Australian to join the association and served as its vice president. He was a member of the National Rail Safety Working Group, which developed an intergovernmental agreement on rail safety. He is a former member of the Federal Standing Committee on Transport, the Australian National Training Authority, and a former director of the Queensland Treasury Corporation Capital Markets Board. In 1999, Vince O'Rourke was honoured at the Queensland Tourism 
Awards for his outstanding contribution as an individual to advancing tourism in Queensland. And in 2000, he was appointed a member of the Order of Australia in recognition of his service to the rail transport industry. It is fitting that Griffith University honour Vincent John O'Rourke AM in recognition of his distinguished service to the community. Acting Chancellor, it is with the greatest pleasure that I present to you Vincent John O'Rourke for admission to the degree of Doctor of the University. I now call upon Mr Vince O'Rourke, Doctor of the University, to deliver this evening's occasional address. Acting Chancellor of Griffith University, Henry Smurden, Vice-Chancellor, Professor Glenn Davis. Professor Alan Hodson, Dean of the Faculty of Commerce and Management. Academic staff, members of the University Council and other members of the official party. Graduates and their families, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you, Vice-Chancellor, for your kind remarks. And I deeply appreciate the great honour Acting Chancellor, that the University has bestowed on me this evening. It's been a long and most rewarding journey for me, from a lad railway porter some 45 years ago to this wonderful Griffith University graduation ceremony here tonight. During my working life, I have been very fortunate to have been part of a revolution in an old economy industry, railways, as they have moved from the steam era into the business and technology driven industry that I am confident will be at the forefront of land transportation in this century. I joined Queensland Rail from the New South Wales Railways in October 1990 and very much welcome the challenge of transforming an old bureaucratic government department into a modern and progressive business enterprise. I was most fortunate to work with a progressive board, a top leadership team, committed personal staff. But most of all, to have had the support and the encouragement of my wife, Ailsa, in a demanding corporate life. Both QR and Griffith have worked very hard over the last decade, facing up to the enormous challenges of the global marketplace and the vital need for new ideas and new ways to reskill and to change our workforce and to prepare young people for the dynamic future ahead of us. A fundamental issue for QR and one which Griffith worked with us was to develop a new style of leader. A leader who would give effect to a shift in workplace attitude to untap the energy and creativity of our people to give us a competitive edge to secure our future. This passion to become an innovative and creative organisation and to leave behind our group bureaucratic past has been paying dividends not only for business performance, but also for cultural change in this old industry. Last year, QR received national recognition for its corporate excellence in the Good Reputation Index published by the Sydney Morning Herald and the Melbourne Age newspapers. Overall, QR was ranked fifth out of the top 100 companies in Australia and first of the nine transport companies 
that made the top 100. Rankings were based on six criteria covering employment, environmental performance, social impact, ethics, financial performance and market position. The remaking of QR in the 90s, underpinned by a huge $6.5 billion capital investment program, spurred on technological advances, a massive growth in productivity, new business systems and strong commercial performance. But I would like to think that the best investment that we made was the building of a learning culture in the organisation, which was very much an investment in our future development and business growth. Synergies between railways and universities in this country is very strong. The universities date back to the 1840s, just as the railways were about to open up this vast nation. They are both old establishments with entrenched cultures that are today giving way to integrated and adaptive networks involving their peoples. And I recall so well in the late 70s working in the huge New South Wales railways with a 50,000 plus workforce, the organisation did not have a finance or commercial person with a tertiary quali qualification. How the world has changed in a few short years with the revolution in financial markets and business management. Today, these organisations have sophisticated commercial and treasury management systems with young people, young men and women excelling in their achievements. QR today is 137 years of age. Its commitment to knowledge, technology and innovation is achieving good gains both at home and abroad. And as the Vice-Chancellor mentioned, its new tilting trains introduced in 1998 have halved the travelling times between Brisbane and Rockhampton and are today the fastest narrow gauge trains in the world with a speed record of some 210 kilometres an hour. They have taken the tourist market by storm and opened up new opportunities for young people in the tourism world. Like Griffith, QR is successfully exporting its management and its technical expertise throughout Asia today working in Malaysia, Thailand, Vietnam and China, to name a few. In fact, every day there's a small fleet of locomotives still or recently repainted in QR colours as a sign of friendship between Queensland and Vietnam, travelling between North Vietnam, hauling freight and passengers from Hanoi into into China. Griffith University and QR have enjoyed a long and rewarding partnership, especially in terms of QR's accel accelerated leadership program and the support of, of scholarships. In today's global and highly competitive marketplace, the need for highly skilled and talented business leaders is a critical capability for any organisation. A strategic alliance between Griffith and QR is benchmarking this very successful leadership program with organisations in Australia and internationally. QR has been determined to develop the potential of all of its people. And in the mid-90s, all of our staff were provided with a book called The Line Ahead. The Line Ahead offered an insight into how QR might look in the year 2045, propelled by advances in technology and management innovation. 
It was designed to encourage our people to think of new concepts and new ideas, to untap their creativity in a world that is changing ever so rapidly. Trains travelling at 500 to 600 kilometres an hour were the order of the day. Innovative and imaginative management had made this once old government department into one of the, nature, the nation's corporate giants. This is a future I truly believe in. I am sure that many of our graduates here tonight will in the future travel by train between Sydney and Brisbane and Melbourne in times of two to three hours as a matter of course as they go about their business. The major forces for change in this information age are impacting dramatically on all kinds of skills required by enterprises and individuals. It is more than ever imperative to make a real connection between industry's business strategy and the workforce and our potential leaders and to develop the intellectual and human capability to enhance our social and competitive position. And I am heartened that here at home, Queensland sees innovation and cultural change of its workforce as fundamental to its smart state objectives. I have been most fortunate during my career to have been involved in a journey to a new world. But the best is yet to come, for science fiction of yesterday is fact today. It's a time to be bold. It's a time in business when the limits of our imagination become the only real barriers to innovation and success. You, our graduates, are the leaders of the 21st century in which technology, innovation and management excellence will dominate the future of this great nation. Good luck and my congratulations and best wishes to all of you. And thank you, Griffith University, for honouring me. Acting Chancellor, we've been privileged tonight to hear from Dr. Vincent O'Rourke, Australia's leading rail visionary and chief executive. Vince's speech contained much wisdom for the graduates who are the reason for tonight's celebration. Like your university education, the speech was a gift from one generation to the next. I want to suggest though that there are also important lessons in Vince's career. The first is the importance of judgment. As he said, Vince began in an old economy industry in, a, in the most traditional and hierarchical of government departments. As he rose, Vince respected the traditions of the railways, but also understood the necessity to move ahead. Every step of his journey was marked by an ability to think about what might be possible and a willingness to make the necessary changes. Successful reform requires not just enthusiasm, but judgment. Vince has always demonstrated both. The second lesson I've drawn from Vince's career is the importance of pride in the team, in the organisation, and in the objectives. And the final important lesson from this most distinguished career is about the importance of people. Even as he promoted modernisation, Vince never lost sight of the communities that relied on Queensland Rail, of the families where father and son, mother and daughter, built their working lives around QR. Where change was unavoidable, Vince found ways to open new opportunities to that team, new options, supporting people to study and acquire new skills. Or, for example, creating a rail workshop in Townsville to restore historic trains, which are now huge tourist attractions. And each year, Vince sent thousands of employees and stakeholders of government and the community a stoneware jar of railway port to remind everyone about the achievements of the QR team that year. 
through vision about the future of the rail, through care to carry people with him, Vince O'Rourke carried a successful conclusion, the most comprehensive rail reform program ever in Queensland history. He will long be hailed as one of our greatest public servants. At Griffith, we're proud of our association with Vince O'Rourke and with Queensland Rail. We hope that you, in turn, will be proud of your association with the university and stay in touch with Griffith and your fellow graduates through the Alumni Association. You will find details in the back of your program. But before you rush to make that call, please join me in thanking, for his inspirational address tonight, Doctor of the University, Vince O'Rourke. Ladies and gentlemen, the ceremony is now concluded. When the music begins, please rise and remain standing as the staff and dais parties, along with the graduates, retire. <laughs>